Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, director said that I was not allowed to leave the locker room, and soon she was fired. The second story, boss that didn't use formal timekeeping installed a time clock because I was late getting back from lunch one day. The third story, nursing home asking to be billed over a year later, after having the gall to treat my MIL badly. And the first story is, don't leave the locker room, you got it boss. Several years ago I was a high school PE teacher. The district I worked in was Title I with a huge population of ELL and low income kids, 95% or so. For hygiene reasons we required the kids to wear PE uniforms and change for PE. Kids also showered after class. Because of our students' socioeconomic standards, I always had spare clothes and towels the kids could use, and offered to wash PE clothes weekly for students who didn't have access to laundry facilities. This practice was also done by the male PE teacher, and has actually been around since before I started. Before I get to the MC, there are a few more details you need to set the scene. Classroom management and teaching is a whole art in and of itself. PE is kind of next level, because you have 30 plus kids all running around in a lot of area to cover. In addition, the genius that designed our school decided not to have the locker rooms connect to the gym, but rather put a hallway in between. This was somewhat of a management nightmare because there were basically three places you had to supervise, and there wasn't a way to watch all three at once. On top of that, locker rooms had to be locked between classes. The laundry facility was also located in the hallway between the gym and locker rooms. Two-way radios were also frequently used by all PE teachers in the district, as well as admin, counselors, etc. For safety and to find kids when outside, before and after school, etc. Finally, because our district was a decent size but rural, it was a stepping stone for a lot of wannabe admin. They would come in for a year or two and then leave. This revolving door of admin also made it a bit frustrating because rules and climate changed every few years, while people tried to leave their mark to get hired for the next gig. Now on to the MC. As I mentioned, it was always a little crazy trying to supervise kids everywhere, but for the most part the kids were really good and respectful, and we had a pretty good system. I would often duck out of the locker room between classes to start laundry, let kids into the locker room during a class period, or open it up for sports teams leaving early at the end of the day. These sort of frequent interruptions happen more often than you would think, but we made it work. That is until we got Attila the Hun as principal. This particular chick thought her SH didn't stink and came in with the idea that everything in the school sucked and it was her job to fix it. She was an alcoholic that had learned to work the system and stepped on everyone she could trying to get to the top. Well, one day she wandered past PE while sneaking into the building late to work and decided this was her time to make a point. I had left to go put laundry in the dryer and she proceeded to chew my A out for leaving the locker room unsupervised. Keep in mind this was during a passing period where other teachers are allowed to step out of their room to go to the bathroom, make copies, etc. This applied to everyone except myself and the male teacher in PE. I should add I was the union rep, and she hated me for it because the union held her accountable. I was told under no circumstances was I allowed to leave the locker room during the day, unless it was to go to class, and that no students were allowed anywhere without supervision. Okay boss, you got it. I also need to mention that everyone else in the district knew how much she sucked, and most other building admin and teachers had also had run-ins with her. I was pretty well respected having been in the district a while, and worked in several other buildings and had been in teacher leadership positions. The day she told me that I put my plan into place, and made sure I always had my two-way radio with me. I laid low for a week or two and then put my plan into action. First thing I needed to put laundry in the dryer, so I radioed HS Girls PE to Attila the Hun over the entire district radio. She responded thinking it was urgent, to which I stated, I need to go put clothes into the dryer and need coverage in the locker room. She tried to tell me that I didn't need to radio for this, to which I reminded her that she insisted we never left the locker room unless it was to start class. About 15 minutes later, she strolls down rather peeved off to let me go do my mundane task. I'm instantly flooded with text messages from other admin, teachers, etc., who have access to radios and heard it go out laughing. A few days later, she sent a kid down to change because they're going to in-house and had gang-affiliated clothing on. Kid comes to me while I'm teaching asking to open the locker room. You guessed it, I got on the radio and asked her to come down and unlock the door and wait, 
reminding her that kids are not to be unsupervised. This goes on for about a week with about four to five radio calls a day. Anytime students, sports teams, or anyone else needed to get into the locker room, or I had tasks to do, it went out over the radio for all to hear, reminding her each time of her rules. She finally caught on to what I was doing and then started ignoring me on the radio. At that point I would radio to all other admin in the school and district, or anyone else that could come and assist it, since it appeared our admin were unavailable. Also not a good look for her. I think this MC was one of the last straws for Attila because shortly thereafter she was fired. I think the superintendent got word of all of her shadiness, but me constantly on the radio didn't help. He ended up coming to me, and the male teacher, letting us know we could go back to actually doing our jobs, and we wouldn't be punished. As an update, she was subsequently fired from other admin jobs in our state every year for about three years until COVID hit. I have zero regrets. The next story is... Peeved I took a long lunch. Okay, pay me overtime, and then some. I was a specialized skilled tradesman about 20 years ago. I still am now, but in a slightly different field. This particular field is almost always a small business, and this was no exception. I worked full-time in a shop with my boss, his brother, and maybe two other part-time employees at the time. Since there was only a handful of us, there was no formal timekeeping. I was full-time, so he would pay me 40 hours a week. Actually, he liked the old semi-monthly system, so 8 hours a day for 12 to 14 days a check, which worked out fine by me. At the time, my wife's work was only about two blocks away from mine, so we would carpool nearly every day. Her job was a more corporate, cube farm type job that kept more formal time records, so she would have to be there by a specific time, take a specific amount of time for lunch, etc. She also ended up putting in a small amount of overtime, usually less than an hour every day. Since she was supposed to be to work for before my job's business hours, I would drop her off, let myself into the shop, and get my day started a little bit early often helping out by getting things started for my boss or his brother. I didn't mind, just something to do at the beginning of the day. This routine actually resulted in me being in the shop, doing work-related activities about 9 hours sometimes more a day, without overtime. Part of the routine was me meeting my wife for lunch which would have me out of the shop 30 to 60 minutes every day. Worked well, life was good. One day my wife had a doctor's appointment. It was scheduled midday and rather than just taking her car to work that day, or having me leaving the car with her for the day she asked me to go with her. The doctor's office is about 15 minutes from work. It wasn't for anything serious and shouldn't take too long so we should be there and back in about an hour. It turned out the office was running a bit behind, and we had to wait a good amount of time for her to see her doctor. It took me just over an hour and a half to get back to the shop. I didn't say anything to my boss when I left since I wasn't planning and taking any longer than usual, and it wasn't any of his business. Besides, we're both professional adults and we can act as such. I figured he'd ask why I took so long. I'd tell him what happened and no harm, no foul. Instead, he just looked at his watch, and then the clock on the wall when I walked in and said nothing. Okay, whatever. I'm usually longer than 8 hours every day, I guess he realizes that, right? Wrong. By the start of the next pay period, about a week and a half, he had installed a time clock. It's obvious what happens next. He went from paying me 8 hours a day to up to 9, or more a day, just because he was annoyed I took a long lunch one day. This is typical trip over dollars to save dimes mentality of his. Wait, it gets better. Remember how I said he liked a good old fashioned semi-monthly payday system? Well actually calculating pay that way confused him so he would calculate payroll as if he was paying bi-weekly. So this genius of geniuses was paying me, edit, one to three days overtime every pay period for only being there just over eight hours a day, five days a week. I tried pointing that out to him, but he wouldn't listen. So I just cashed my checks and was happy. Eventually, I started to get sick of his business practices and attitude and started working shorter and shorter hours since he was paying me extra anyway. It gave me time to work on the side or work second jobs. He ended up laying off myself and another full-time employee, eventually since his backwards business sense wasn't managing to make any money for some reason. I was so relieved. I struggled for a little while but ended up changing my career focus slightly and am doing just fine. The last story is... Make the nursing home pay indefinitely. Short explanation first. I have full power of attorney for my mother-in-law. This is mostly because two of her children are deceased, and the two remaining daughters are high-level managers and executives, and are out of town on business a lot. I work at home, and before my mother-in-law went to the nursing home, she lived with us, and I assisted and am familiar with her financial affairs. So making me POA made sense, yes. Her daughters are set up appropriately as well. Two years ago, a medical issue caused my mother-in-law to become bedridden and could no longer walk or take care of her own personal things. We had to get her into a home. 
It took five nursing homes and six moves across two years to get her into a place, and that's as close to perfect as we could get. After we finally get her squared away, she's a Medicaid patient, which means she can't have over $2,500 of personal funds, and the nursing home takes all of her SS and pension income, except for $60 a month. She had some funds sitting aside. However, the Medicaid approval didn't come until the fourth nursing home. Over the two years, she had some things paid be Medicare and private funds, and now she's spent down to under her required amount of funds she can keep. The first nursing home we had her in had probably the most draconian policies, didn't treat her well, and was about to kick her out back then, unless we privately paid or get her Medicaid approval completed. We then went on a chain of going through other nursing homes that allowed her in, but the Medicaid kicked in. The first nursing home also claimed on their advertising they take Medicaid pending. The phrase means you're in the process of being approved, and that hopefully they can retro bill your stay. But they didn't. No available beds, and weren't really helpful except to pester us with, when are you going to pay, or when are you going to leave? We had several other care issues with them as well. We were better treated by the next few nursing homes, but not perfect, and now have her in a safe place. About eight months ago, about a year and a half since she had been at the first nursing home, we get a bill for several hundred dollars. I argued with the nursing home, why the F didn't you bill us back then, while she had available funds to pay this. She cannot pay now as she's under a limited income. The amount owed isn't much, I was just mad at them for the bad treatment and the SH attitude they treated my MIL with during her time there and to top it off, sent us a bill well after she had the ability to pay. They didn't care, said they had no control over their billing. Fine, but well over a year late? Malicious Compliance Act Number 1 I told them we'd pay, based on the amount she could really get out of her $60 a month that Medicaid lets her keep, $5 per month. They weren't happy, but I sent a $5 payment monthly to the parent company of the nursing home. This only lasted for about a few months, but they were also slow to collect the $5 in their billing system, so actually I paid an extra $5 once to keep ahead. Then they started getting antsy with the small amount they were getting, and started including more dire wording in their bills. Got more threatening phone calls. Whether any of the threats were real or not, the letters weren't fun. As I said, the amount wasn't much. I went ahead and used my own funds, paid off the bill, just to keep the nursing home from escalating. But as I said, I had sent an extra single $5 just to keep ahead. Malicious Compliance Act Number 2 The nursing home is paid off, however they have a negative balance, owing us $5. The nursing home's billing system is now issuing a monthly bill, showing the negative $5, and also included in an envelope for payment. I figure this is costing the nursing home about $0.75 cents a month, printing a bill, using two envelopes, and mailing it to us. As far as I know, it appears their system will keep spending $0.75 cents a month forever. So in a year, they will have spent $8 to send us a negative balance bill, and that will just keep building and building. Haven't gotten any other notification that they would return it. I'm not going to waste my time contacting them. They'll sit and eat it. Edit. Well, it's been four months and they are still sending a negative $5 bill. Another suggested it could cost between $15 to $40 a month for them to send me this bill. Optimistically then, they will have screwed themselves over as soon as the end of this calendar year. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.